Welcome to Mrs. Bibb's Algebra 2 class. This is first nine weeks, week one. Every week you will see kind of a, the standards we'll be covering, the timeline, the materials you'll need. Then every week you will see table of contents provided in your folder for you. I have given you a table of contents if you'll fill in these page numbers, please. Uh, make sure you put a page number on every page. When you do your warm up or any page number that you encounter, make sure you label what that page number is. So put a title on each page. And then make sure you put a page number in the upper right hand corner. On the student journal pages, I've encouraged my students in the past to put the page number up there beside where the date is. So that would be a good place for that. Now let's just jump right into what you'll, else you'll be encountering. You will see a warm up every week. So if you'll complete that warm up, and then you will also have the answers to that warm up every week. I'm going to, if we do distance learning, because right now it's June and we don't know, but I'm going to um, do office hours when, once school starts in the fall, and I'll be available online, or you may be able to call in if you don't have internet access. You may be able to call in with a, a phone, a landline, or a cell phone and be able to ask questions and talk to me. Okay, this first part of the lesson, this is page number two, so this is the student journal page, I think this is student journal page two, this is page two and three it says. Um, but this first part, I'd like for you to take the time, you can pause the video now, I'm gonna pause the video as well, and go through, and for A through H, I think it's A through H, yes. For A through H, if you will put one of these words, on A through H. And you can guess, some of these you know. There's one on here I absolutely believe that every one of you will know. So if you'll do that right now, take the time to go through and label each of these um, questions A through H. I have labeled each of these. I'll go through the answers with you quickly. Absolute value for letter A. Square root for letter B. I know you can't see all of that. Constant for letter C. Exponential for letter D cubic for letter E, linear, that's the one I think everybody knows, for letter F, rational for letter G, and quadratic for letter H. Okay, let's go on to the next page. It says, what are the characteristics of some of the basic parent functions? One of the ones that I like to point out is absolute value. What does absolute value look like? And students usually tell me that it looks like a V. So every absolute value problem, it's going to look like a V. So if you see a V, it could be an upside down V. If you see a V, that's going to be absolute value. Of course, a linear function is going to be a line. And then I also tell students that I understand if they say linear for a constant function, but a constant function is going to be a horizontal line. So make sure any horizontal line, you call that a constant function. A quadratic function reminds us of another letter of the alphabet. Hopefully as you look at it, you will think it reminds you of the letter U. So it looks like a U. It can be an upside down U as well. And I think that's all those that I normally say something about. The rest of them you learn. Um, how to identify them. Okay, for number three, we're going to write an equation for each function, and we're going to, it doesn't say to do this here, but we're gonna make a table of values for each of those functions so that when you're asked to graph, you'll have this table of values that you can use to graph the parent function. And the reason why it's called a parent function is because it's like your starting function. If you wanna graph any absolute value, then the starting equation for a parent function is y equals the absolute value of x. And so again, when you have your equation, you'll be asked to recognize with an equation also. When you, you have your equation, then when you see those two vertical bars, that means you have absolute value. I think square root's another one that's easy to identify. What you have, if you see that square root symbol, 
then that is um, a square root function. I want to remind you also that oftentimes you're going to see this written as f of x. So if you see f of x, f of x is function notation for y. Those are the same thing. So anytime you see f of x, that is y. A constant function is y equals any number. In this picture, I believe the constant is 1. So for this picture, y equals 1. We'll call that the parent function for this particular problem. And then an exponential function. For an exponential function, it has a pattern, just like this y equals a number. You usually have y equals and you have a number raised to a variable. We're going to use um, the equation y equals 2 to the x power for this one. We'll call that our parent function for now. And then let's look at cubic function, y equals x cubed. A linear function, y equals x. A rational function, um, I want you to think about rational as being a fraction, so y equals 1 over x. That's a rational function. And then the last one is quadratic, and that's y equals x squared. Now, when you're asked to graph these, you're going to need a table of values. And so I'm going to give you the table of values that you should use when you graph these. For absolute value, you're going to use negative 1, 1, 0, 0, and 1, 1. That's for absolute value. For square root, you're going to use 0, 0, 1, 1, and 4, 2. 0, 0, 1, 1, and 4, 2. And see, 0, 0, negative 1, 1, positive 1, 1. For your constant, you're going to have um, x's, and you can use negative 1, 0, and 1. And then your y value will be whatever your number is. It's the same number all the way through. So for this particular one, you're going to have negative 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. That's for this parent function. For this exponential, you're going to have um, negative 1 and 0.5 and 0 2 to the 0 would be 1, and 1, 2 to the first power, would be 2. So that's your ordered pairs for that pair function, that 2 to the x. For a cubic function, for this particular cubic function, you're going to, oh, I don't know why I'm doing that. Oops. You're going to have negative 1, negative 1 cubed is negative 1, 0, 0 cubed is 0, and 1, 1 cubed, 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. For this one, y equals x, just like it says. If x is negative 1, y is negative 1. If x is 0, y is 0. If x is positive 1, y is positive 1. Moving on to the next one, y equals 1 over x. We are going to use, and I think we only used two ordered pairs, and drew... Um, curves through those two ordered pairs. We're going to use 1, 1 and negative 1, negative 1. So if we know that it is a rational function, then we're going to put these two dots, 1, 1 and negative 1, negative 1, and then we're going to draw curves through those two dots that kind of hug the axes. Okay, then looking for the next one, the quadratic. If x is negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1. If x is 0, 0 squared is 0. If x is 1, 1 squared is 1. So those are all the tables that you would use for these functions for page 2 and page 3. And I think we did everything that that asked. Okay, so what you're going to do next 
is you're going to complete this practice for solving equations. And you have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, practice solving equations. You are going to, and I can, I can solve an equation really quick to, to remind you how to do it. When solving an equation, you're going to want to combine like terms on the left or the right if you need to. You're going to want to also get rid of parentheses if you need to by distributing. Remember when you have something that looks like this, you distribute 4 times 2x and 4 times negative 3. So if you have distribution, then you're going to write that down. Okay, so like I was saying, if you have like terms on the left-hand side of your equal sign, a lot of teachers will say on the left or on the right. And when they say left or right, they're talking about what side of the equal sign in which um, certain aspects of the problems, problem are. Okay, so as we look at this, I do have like terms on the left side of this equal sign. I have positive 1x and negative 4x. 1x minus 4x is negative 3x plus 5 bring down my equal sign. There's not like terms on the right hand side. And I did a great example, but that's perfectly fine. The next thing I'm going to do is move my smallest x, or they're the same size. I'm going to move one x to the other side, one of them. Negative three x plus x is zero. Negative three x plus three x is zero. I should have said three x there. And then I'm going to end up with nothing and then five equals 12. Does five equal 12? Hopefully you know the answer to that is no. So when you make a false statement, then the answer is no solution. Now had we made a true statement, if that had ended up with seven equals seven, then that is true and this would be infinitely many solutions. Let me see if I can do a quick one for you. And it will probably come out as a fraction, but that's okay. Distribute, four times two x is eight x, four times one is positive four. Bring the right hand side down. I keep my equal sign lined up that wasn't very good, but I keep it lined up. I'm going to move my smallest x to my largest x by the inverse operation. So I'm going to subtract 8x minus 2x is 6x. Bring down my plus 4. Bring down my equal sign lined up. And the only thing left on the right-hand side is negative 1. Next, I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides because my goal is to get the x on one side of the equal sign and my constants, those are the things without the variables, on the other side of the equal sign. So I've removed the 4 from the left-hand side and I have 6x equals negative 5. Now I need my x alone, divide by 6. So x is going to equal does negative 5 divide by 6? No, it does not. So I want you to always leave your answers as fractions, not decimals. You don't need a calculator. Um, all of us can do 4 times 2 and 4 times 1, and we can subtract 8 and 2. So if you'll please just not use a calculator. I do not want decimals. If you'll complete all your practice review activity, you've got your practice review, you've got your answers to your practice review, and then you have your assessment for week 1. If you have internet access, you'll be able to turn those things in, all of these things in, through Google Classroom. If you do not have internet access, then you will um, be told how to get your assignments to me. Thank you.